Hey everyone, I'm Alan Thrall, and in this video, I'm going to discuss what you should do for training when life stress is high and motivation is low. There's only one motherfucking option. Stay hard. This question came from a Q&A that I did on Instagram, and I wanted to make a video explaining how I personally approach this. I am human. This does happen to me sometimes too. So if life stress is high and motivation is low, one of the last things that most people want to do is work out. Working out requires focus and a level of intensity. You might not have the bandwidth for that. Working out requires time. You might not have any of that. Working out requires energy, and you might be on E. Now, I don't feel sorry for you, and I'm not going to tell you to lower your standards and say, it's okay to skip your workout. Life's short. None of that. Quite the opposite, actually. Instead of saying, you poor little thing, just skip your workout, I'm saying, you're better than that. Here are some adjustments that you can make. Tomorrow. There is no tomorrow. Now, chances are, it's not the gym that you dread. It's the workout itself. The workout is just too daunting. You don't have the time or energy for it. Because if I told you that your workout was just 20 reps of band pull-aparts, you'd say, okay, I can do that. But when your workout is squats, five sets of five reps, heavy. Bench press, five sets of five reps, heavy. Romanian deadlifts, three sets of eight reps, heavy. You start to think about the monumental effort that it's going to take to get to the gym, to put your squat shoes on, to put your knee sleeves on, to wait for a rack, to get a bar, to squat the bar, to add weight and continue doing that until your first working set. Then you grind your face off. You rest for a few minutes. You do it again for four more sets. Then you clean up and you do it all over again for bench and so on. Sometimes your workout feels like a job or a chore and you're not even being paid for it, at least not immediately. This scenario has too many hurdles to jump. There are too many barriers to break through. Most of the time, when you're on your A game, you sprint through those barriers, you jump straight over all those hurdles, no matter what, you get to the gym. But when life stress is high and motivation is low, you need to figure out how to eliminate those barriers and those hurdles, or at least minimize them, and I'm gonna show you how. Now, each phase that I talk about is an increasing level of high stress, low motivation starting with the most mild case. So a little bit of life stress and not a lot of motivation to train. Phase one, you can change the tempo of your exercises or the variation. Change your squats to paused squats. Low bar squat to high bar squat. Back squat to front squat. Bench press to pause bench press. Normal grip bench press to close grip bench press. Deadlifts to wide grip deadlifts or Romanian deadlifts. This simple change will likely force you to use less weight while still getting a good stimulus and still being pretty specific to the movement they're trying to get better at. Less weight means less warm-ups, which means less time in the gym. Personally, if I really don't want to squat heavy weight, I will still squat, but I'll go to the gym and I'll squat without knee sleeves, without a belt, sometimes no shoes. I'll just go ass to grass, trying to touch my butt to the floor. I'll pause down at the bottom and then I'll stand up. Doing this forces me to use less weight than if I was to do a normal squat with a belt and knee sleeves and to just parallel or wherever. This change in squat variation requires a few warm-up sets and maybe even fewer working sets if I really push myself for just one to three sets. Big, heavy compound movements done at a high effort with a belt, with knee sleeves, all that kind of stuff, requires everything in your mind and body. You've got to mentally focus. <laughs> You've got to be intentional with your breathing, with your bracing, balance, coordination, timing, form, effort, all of this just to lift this weight. So if you're not ready to give 80, 90, or 100% of your effort, these simple adjustments can allow you to still have a good session without needing to max your body's efforts. Phase two, you're a little more stressed and a little less motivated. Try using different equipment. If you have the ability, if your gym has specialty bars, use one that you haven't used before. Spider bar, camber bar, axle bar. Try deadlifting against bands or benching against bands. Use the incline bench instead of a flat bench. Bench press on a Smith machine instead of a free barbell. When you first started going to the gym, and I think this is true for a lot of us, there was this level of excitement. Being in the gym and learning new things was play. It was playtime. Sometimes you have to awaken that kid inside of you again. And just tweaking this equipment variable in your routine might be enough to give you a spark of curiosity or enjoyment that you're desperately needing in your routine. 
sticking to a program week in and week out can be monotonous. Sometimes change is nice. Since this new equipment you're using is less familiar, you might not be so attached to the weight on the bar or the absolute load. This is something that a lot of people get hung up on. Before you go to the gym, every session you have these expectations that you should be lifting this much weight and you really don't want to. I'm doing squats for sets of five. I should be lifting around like 335. I just really don't want to. Switch the bar and go by feel so you're not so attached to that number. Phase three, you've got pretty high stress, pretty low motivation. The thought of changing the variation on your lifts ain't doing it. Changing the equipment ain't doing it. You still don't want to go to the gym. Try switching from barbells to machines. So if you regularly train with barbells, do machines just for today or for the week. Instead of squatting, do leg press or hack squat. Instead of Romanian deadlifts, do leg curls or some sort of hip thrust. Instead of barbell rows, use a row machine. Instead of benching, do a chest press machine. You get the point. Machines require no setup besides maybe adjusting the seat to your height. Warm-up jumps don't need to be as tedious as with barbell lifts. And you can sort of just close your eyes and push against the machine because you don't have to worry as much about balance and technique. And you're not so attached to the weight that you're using for this machine, so all that really matters is putting forth some effort, not necessarily the weight on the barbell. And if the gym is empty, you could even do three to four exercises, three to four machines as a giant set for two to four rounds. This will keep your mind occupied and it'll save a lot of time. Now, a little less common, but if by chance you are a machine bro or a machine chick and you don't venture out to the free weight section, now is your time to shine. Try a barbell squat or a barbell deadlift. You can even do a Romanian deadlift if you don't want to set the plates down on the ground and do a traditional conventional deadlift. Try standing barbell overhead press, bent over barbell rows. Since this is relatively uncharted territory for you, it is not going to take much weight to feel like you are working the muscles. Focusing on your balance will keep your mind occupied, and who knows, maybe you'll be bit by the iron bug. Okay, so stress is at an all-time high, and motivation is at an all-time low. You don't want to do any variations. You don't want to use different equipment. You do not want to use machines. You need to go to the gym and do a body weight or calisthenics workout. Stay with me, stay with me. I'm not going to tell you to do muscle-ups and front lever holds. I want you to walk into the gym or into your garage. I don't care. Drop to the floor and do some push-ups. Congratulations, that's your first working set. Already done in less than a minute. Now for the following sets, you can either just continue sticking with bodyweight push-ups or if you get into a groove, add a band or some plates and do weighted push-ups. You can do the same thing with dips. And I want you to superset your dips or your push-ups with pull-ups. If you can't do pull-ups, do inverted rows. Supersets will get a lot of work done in less time. Now, if you were supposed to perform bench press for five sets of six reps, just do weighted push-ups or weighted dips for five sets of six reps. So the program can stay the same. The exercise just simply changes. After that, I want you to do some walking lunges with your body weight. That's right. I want you to do a full body workout. So you're going to do walking lunges with body weight. After you do that, put 20-pound dumbbells in your hands. Who knows? You might get fired up, and before you know it, you're lunging the 80s around the gym, and you get an awesome leg workout better than anything you've had in the past month. And then I want you to finish off this session with cardio, 10 to 20 minutes. Do an assault bike, walk on an incline treadmill, do a rower, whatever. Breathing heavy and getting a little sweaty will help relieve some stress. And it might get you back into the flow of exercising. I don't care if this is one session or if it's a full week or even a full month. Now notice that I never said don't do anything. I always suggest doing your workout. Skipping workouts becomes a bad habit that is very hard to break. Every time you skip a workout, the next workout becomes easier to skip and easier to skip and easier and easier and easier until you no longer skip workouts. You just don't work out, period. Don't get stuck in the perpetual cycle of falling behind and always feeling like you're playing catch up. Stay ahead by always doing something. And if you flat out do not have any time or energy to work out, or you are chronically stressed out and you're always needing motivation, you need to reevaluate your lifestyle and figure out how to start taking better care of yourself. So to recap, first, try doing a variation of your program to lift. Then try some different equipment that you're not used to. Try using machines instead of free weights or free weights instead of machines. And lastly, just do a body weight workout. That's it. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. And always remember, Trend on time!